Bine mine yor olo shela poros yifos maria brigos poser. Ascending from the Nile, seven cows, good appearance, healthy fleshed. Baterina ba'ochu, and they're grazing in the marsh. Rashi, what is a dream? A dream usually is all symbolisms. So, what is the symbolism of Ifos Mare? They're good looking, similarly mm. Mesova. It's an indication there'll be days of plenty. Shabrios, Niros Yofa Zelozer. Shane, Ain, Ain Brio, Tsarbechaberto. There's no envy among people. No person's eye is Tsoro. The word Tsoro literally means is narrow. What's when you have a narrow eye, meaning you focus not someone else. A person is fully occupied with his own success because he's satisfied. There's no reason to focus on someone else. So, ifos mare. That that we say people will look in a positive way. People will not look at one other negatively because when people are satisfied, there's no reason to look at the other person negatively. So there be such wealth, there be such plenty. That's why it's Yifos Mare. If it would just be the question of abundance, it would be enough to see so cows that were brios bosser, healthy fleshed, which is an indication of healthy, you know. That's abundance. Yifos mar means that because of the abundance, therefore people, so seemingly, so it's, it's, it's superfluous. Because if there's such abundance, it's understood this question. The answer is that not necessarily. Meaning, Mm -hmm. Sometimes you could have abundance, and it's hoarded by the few. So if it's hoarded by the few, so the the majority, because they're denied, they have this negative feeling. There'd be such a level of abundance that there'd be more than enough for everybody. As much as you want to take, you can't take it all. That that's the level of abundance there will be as a result. So the fos mare goes to qualify what is the degree, degree of abundance. Because you could have abundance, and yet you have the haves and you have to have nots, right? Like what's happening today in the United States. The middle class is disappearing. So you have so much, but there is so much. So the wealthy took to so much, the middle class doesn't have any more. So that's the problem. But if there's so much that as much as they, they take, there's so much left over, so then it's Yifos Mare. So, so interesting. When a person, yes, are you envious? No. And he doesn't, because a person doesn't realize the root of his feelings. You know, you don't like a certain class of people for whatever reason. The question is why. So you'll give me ten reasons why. That's not the real reason. Because there's an underlying reason, therefore all these various stereotypes apply themselves, but there's an underlying reason. Because there is envy, because you're lacking and you're hurting, it manifests itself. He's this and he's that. It's them. So if you see the other person positively, and there's no envy, even if you'd have less, you wouldn't see the person negatively. For instance, a parent has a child. The child has so much. And the child, parent doesn't have. 
because the parent is not envious of the child. Regardless, it'll always be, the parent will always see the child in the positive. Mm -hmm. But a third party, who doesn't have and that person does have, will see that same person differently. Why? Right? The answer is because the question is the way you see him. In either way, both people are lacking. Both people are lacking. Okay? Ba'ochu. Right, what's Ochu Bagam in the marshes? Vini Shedu Por Sacheris, Olos, Achreen, Mini Or. Again, it says, Behold. What is, what, what is the post? Always repeat the word, Behold. Behold means it, it was so vivid. It's as if Paro was experienced this as if it was a reality. That was the, the clarity of the dream. It wasn't something far off. He was there. He was, that's the Hineg. And again, the Hineg. Bad looking. So why is there the envy? Because they're thin fleshed. And they're standing near the cows on the edge of the Nile. Meaning, so we're not speaking about the plenty is gone. There's a time they're still left over, but the years of famine have come, are coming. Because it says, Omdos. Now, Dalid. The thin, the bad looking, thin fleshed cows, they eat a shenaporos, yifos abrios. They eat the seven good looking cows, and which are healthy. One second. Vayikats paro. I mean, what's the, what's the source of drought? What's famine? Evidence lacking. There's no rain. There's no. You can't irrigate. So, so the the water is what. That's what makes the difference. Whether there's famine or or, or, or there's there's bounty or plenty. So therefore, it's not over yet. The the famine is beginning. That means there's still a remnant of the past. No, the, the canal rises. The reason why the canal is water is because the the water rises. If the water, there's not enough water to rise. The canals are empty. Everything just dries up. So it dies. It's standing on the edge of the or. That means it still has relevance to that. That's why you still have the good-looking cows there. They're, 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 they're standing next to one another. What's v'tachon tochalno? Sim shnekos simchas asov nishkachas bimearov. The indication that the joy of the plenty will be totally forgotten during the, the famine years. It's as if like it never happened. That's how bad it will be. People will be hurting so badly. There won't even be solace. Sometimes you have solace of remembering the good times. They won't even have solace of the past. No, find, people find comfort in memories. It'll be so bad, they're not going back there. tells us that originally the family was supposed to be much longer. But because when Yosef interpreted the dreams and he said to Paro, it's not me, it's Hashem, that's the reason why the family years were less years. In the schus that he said to Paro, he's speaking to a king, he's talking to, to a pagan king, he's speaking to a civilization, this is the most advanced civilization. You've been just taken out of the pit, out of the dungeon. What are you, you trying to, to proselytize this, this pagan king that he should believe, become a monotheist? As they say, it takes a degree of, of what? Of, of faith and feel secure with yourself. Mm -hmm. So in the merit that he did that, even to the king, that's why the famine was shorter. It was only seven years. One 
second. When it speaks about the bad-looking cows, it says, Dakos habosar. They were thin-fleshed. And it says they swallowed up the seven good-looking cows. Vabrios. Doesn't have brios bosar. Right? Doesn't mention flesh again. Healthy. What does it mention? The bosar. When it, because it could have said the tolk on the haporos, rosamara vadak vadakos. Right? And we know dakos means fleshed, but it says dakos abosar. The seven cows, ifasamara vabrios. Doesn't have brios bosar. Said that it swallowed up all the good, not only the flesh, but it swallows all the good. You get the good. And also, Posek Gimel, it says they stood Eitzla Poros, Asvasior. Doesn't say Al Eitzla Poros, Yifo Samare, Bria Saboser. Right? Doesn't say that. It says that the thin, the bad looking, thin flesh cows stood next to the cows. Which cows? The ones we discussed in the previous. It doesn't, doesn't identify who they are again. That they were good looking and healthy fleshed. doesn't say that. It just refers to them as cows. Mm-hmm. When it's swallowing, it only mentions they're good looking and healthy, but doesn't mention flesh. What? Yeah. But Tamod eats la poros. Eats la poros, he fosa marav abrios, poser. Doesn't say that in Gimel. They stood next to the cows. Doesn't identify which. Thing. The answer is obvious. It's the cows we're talking about. So what it says, Tochan aporos amaros abrog, es sheva aporos. Which cows? The cows we just. No, but we, it's important to identify. He fosa marav abrios. They were good looking and they were healthy. Healthy what? Healthy means fleshed. So say fleshed. As, boy, if, if thin means fleshed, so what does it say with Dakos Abosar? Not sure I'm pointing it out. Sometimes the question, the question doesn't have to be answered. When you think of it, the an, a proper answer, then we'll talk about it. So I was thinking, this is what I was thinking. When you say something is healthy, when you dis- you're so descriptive, saying it's healthy, fleshed, that means you fully appreciate what it is. You're experiencing the totality of the goodness, of the bounty. When, they're, when, when it says, when they were sitting next to them, the good years were starting to blur. That's what it refers to as the cows. Right? The cows. When it ate them, at the time when they swallowed it, at that moment, at, right at that brink when that was about to happen, they still recall they weren't envious yet. Because they still had a recollection of the good, but not the flesh. It already was fading. Brios means the healthy, healthy what? So I have to tell you what. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, see, you know what I'm talking about. But it's not vivid before you rise. It's not, in, in, as you say, it's not in your gut. So therefore, this is an indication it's already fading out until it's like it never existed whatsoever. Once they're swallowed, it's like it never was. That's how bad it's going to be. Okay. You know, it's interesting, you know, people in the concentration camps, you know, many of them, some people always lived in, in poverty, like Jews who came from Russia, from Lithuania. Things were never good, materially speaking. People came from like, Hungary, certain parts of Poland, 
was different. And you know, they had abundance, hungry. They had abundance. They went into the concentration camp for a crumb of bread. What was the value? So people in their lives are so wasteful. We waste so much. I mean, but what is the value of even something which seems to be unimportant? But the circumstance could take that, what you abuse or you just waste, or you don't value, and that becomes a question of life and death. There's a story with the Kleisenberg Rebbe was the death march. He was on the death march and the people, they were dying of thirst. They didn't let him stop to even to wet their lips. And they passed rivers, lakes, whatever they passed. They just marched them. The finally came night time. They stopped in the field. And the Rebbe had a sense and he says to the people, start digging with your fingers into the ground. They just dug maybe six inches and the ground was soft all of a sudden there was water. So the Rebbe went immediately, drank the water. He said the bracha, and he drank the water. So the Rebbe, all his life, regretted that moment, because here he has water. How appreciative should he have been? With what level of kavana, of intention, he said that bracha? And he always felt he didn't say it with sufficient kavana, because he was so anxious to drink that water. His focus was on the water, not on, on being appreciative that the water presented itself.